Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a preview of a new feature that I've been working on in TextMesh Pro, which is the multi-font and material support. And as the title says, uh, this will allow you to mix and match different font assets and materials within the same text object. So as you can see here in this example, we're actually using one, two, three, four, five different font assets in this text object. And what's really nice is as far as the layout engine of Text Mesh Pro is concerned, uh, this is just different characters. It doesn't care that there are different materials. It doesn't care that there are different fonts. So all the different features, rich text tags, kerning, character spacing, alignment, uh, even text auto sizing, for example, if I resize this, everything behaves as you would expect. So let's dive in and take a look at some more specifics in terms of how this feature works. So let's clear the scene and let's add a new text mesh pro object. We'll add one that uses the mesh renderer. Uh, right now this is work in progress, so I still have a lot of work to do, but hopefully uh, you'll be able to get a good sense of the feature in this uh, video preview. So let's start by typing a simple sentence, a simple line of text, I guess. Uh, I'm going to have more than one line, so it's going to be wrong, but uh, uh, in terms of what I'm typing, we're going to let that one slip. So let's enable uh, word wrapping, make sure everything's happy. And let's start uh, mixing and matching, uh, mixing different fonts in there. So let's change the word simple to use uh, the font impact. The way you would do that is you would use a new rich text tag, which is the font tag. So font equal. Uh, this is case sensitive. So we're going to use in quote impact SDF, which is the name of our font. And until the font is located in your resources folder, um, because if you make a typo, it won't show it here. It will just show you what you're typing. Once it finds it, because you typed it correctly, then it will actually use it. And this is sort of a nice visual reminder when you're typing of what's going on, right? So here we've got a simple line of text. Now our character A, which is the Arial font, which is the default font assigned to our text object, as you can see, it's not using any shadow or anything because we're using the default material that's embedded in the font asset. Let's actually change that real quick so that we have a consistent look. So I'm going to go to my material presets and I'll just use the Arial SDF drop shadow, which I'm going to drag over my material inspector of the text mesh project and release it there and as you can see it changed to the different material. So now we have impact that's being used here. Let's change the font for the word line. Okay. So we're going to go here and for line we're going to use a different font. Let's use uh, actually uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. we're going to use the bangers fonts. So we're going to go font equal in quote bangers SDF. So now we're actually switching between three fonts. So Arial, Impact, and this bangers font. Now what if I wanted the word of to go back to being Arial? Well I could certainly uh, use for example the slash font tag. Slash font basically similar to the color tag. There's a stack that's being kept kept track of of the different font attributes that you use. So slash font would go back to the previous one. So we're going from Arial to Impact to Bangers. Slash font here would get this one back to Impact. And if I used slash font again, we'd be back to Arial, which is the first one. But you know, if you used like eight fonts back to back, having to go slash font, slash font, slash font, slash font would be kind of annoying. So I added another version of the font, which is, or the tag, which is font equal default. And anytime you type uh, font equal default, it will switch back to the default font that's actually assigned to the text object. Okay, cool. Now, line spacing. So one of the challenges when you're using different fonts 
is that suddenly uh, the way you created your font asset, they all have different padding, they all have different atlas resolutions, each of the font has different ascenders and their baselines are different and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and when I'm saying they're different is in theory, the font designers are supposed to stick to some standards and for the most part they do, but there are some fonts that are way off and I'm gonna show you some examples of that. And to help us do that, as you know, with Text Mesh Pro, there's a utility class called the Text Info class, which contains information about every single character, every single word, every single line, links, and essentially the mesh uh, being generated by the text object. And you can use that information for all kinds of things to, uh, you know, when I show examples of like uh, changing vertex colors per character, or uh, bending the text, and so on and so forth, or in the link example, uh, I use this text info class. So here I have a small script that's been included with previous versions of Text Mesh Pro. And this script um, allows us to visualize what's actually contained in this text info class. So I've added this script here. And when I say show characters, it will show me the various characters uh, that are used in the text object. So the yellow boxes, uh, actually represent the visible characters and their bounding volume and the gray boxes represent the spaces which are non-visible characters although they still exist obviously in the text. Now the blue lines represent the ascender for a given font and the descender. Um, so as you can see here we're going from Arial which has an ascender right here to Impact which has a, an ascender that's higher and then we go to Bangers which is somewhere in between the two and if we look at the descender, Arial's descender is right here. Uh, hopefully you can see my mouse cursor but I'm all, all below the A. This is the descender of Arial and the descender for Impact is different. So due to that when you use word wrapping, obviously we need to make sure that the line spacing is done correctly. And the way it works is it goes from the lowest descender of a line to the tallest descender of the next line. Let me just tweak it so we don't wrap the word E here. But you can see we're going from the descender of Arial to the ascender of impact right there. And down here it's the same thing. As you can see, Bangers is slightly too short where it actually uses the aerial ascender for that line. Now, having said that, let's go back and show you a problematic font. So we're going to switch this impact here for this Arcade SDF font. And you'll see right away what the issue is. Um, so that font, um, Whenever the designer designed it, maybe he had a party the night before and he was drunk or something. But its uh, baseline is way off, its scaling is way off, its descender is way off, and its ascender is way off. So that, uh, you know, as I was working on adding support for multi-fonts, uh, that became a clear issue that I need to figure out a way to deal with it. So what I did is I modified the font asset uh, panel so if I go to this arcade font and select it, you can now tweak. Um, you were always able to see like the baseline and center and the center, but it didn't make a lot of sense to play with them. Whereas now it makes a lot more sense. So in the case of this arcade font, let's adjust it so that we make it more proportional to the other fonts that we're using. And in theory, once you make them all proportional to each other, that's the only time you'll have to do that. So once you create your font, if you intend to use it, just go in and tweak it so it matches the other ones. So in this case, we're going to replace the first letter S by an A, a capital A, so we can match those two A's. First thing we're going to do is zoom in and adjust our baseline. Uh, and I guess I forgot before I do that, let's change the character spacing and actually stack uh, the two A's on top of each other or partly on top of each other. Now I'm going to adjust the baseline, so I'm going to bring it down to match the other one. And uh, side note, as you can see, the advanced text rendering of Text Mesh Pro, as I zoom in, you know, our text remains super clean and super sharp. So let's play with our baseline again. And here we'll make it like right here. So now our baseline is cool. Let's go back and now adjust our scale. So the scale is new. 
So basically, once you create the font by default, they'll have a scale of one, which is whatever the sample size that was used uh, when you generated it. But now you can override this. And my mouse is ultra sensitive, but as you can see, if I go very slow, it adjusts the size of the text. So in the case of this Arial uh, Arcade font, 1.6 is about the right value to make it the right size. So now that this is done, let's go back and tweak our character spacing back to normal. Let's replace our letter A by an S. And now we can see how this font lines up more appropriately. So now the next thing we can see, let me remove, uh, well, I guess the next thing I forgot to show is we still have to deal with the crazy ascender and descender for this font. And since we made it about proportionally the same size as the A from Arial, let's give it an ascender and descender that's kind of in line. Now keep in mind or pay attention to the fact that our text container, the top is right here and it seems like, gee, we have top alignment, but the text is like way down, almost as if it was like center uh, aligned. And if I was to choose like center aligned, see how it's not really centered? Well, that's because the ascender on this font is really messed up, right? Because the, the text is aligned based on the top ascender. And in the case of this font, it's way up here. So let's see what happens when I adjust it. So when I go back and adjust our ascender, you'll see that now the text scoots up because we're actually aligning it. So we'll give it about the same ascender as Arial, which is, you know, the font's kind of, shorter in nature, so we'll actually make it a little bit lower. In terms of the baseline, it's the same thing. If we look at the line spacing, it's using this crazy tall descender of this arcade font and lining up with the Arial one that's on this second line. So let's adjust its descender as well. And see where the letter P is? We actually want the sender to not be over the P. So the sender will make it like about here should be good. So now our tweaks are done with this font. Now let's keep going. I'm gonna switch uh, this font here and I'm gonna go back to Impact instead of Bangers. Impact SDF. And I'm gonna switch the default font and I'm gonna use Bangers instead. And the last font, we'll use another one called Avalon. There we go. And let's push the word of, uh, like so would be good. And let me add, I forgot to add a space right here. Line of text. Good enough. Okay. Let's make our boxes and our visual aid go away because we don't want to see that. We just want to take a look at our text. Let's change the color of the word simple. That's easy. We'll just use a color tag. So we're going to use a pale yellow. And after the word simple slash color to close it, which is fine. Now, the impact font that is right here, it's kind of cool. You know, we're using the basic material that comes with impact. What if we wanted to use a different material? Well, that's pretty simple to achieve. What we can do is use the other uh, alternative or implementation of the font tag where we can specify a material. So material equal, it's still case sensitive, impact, STF. Now in this case, it's already found a valid material, but that's not the one that I want to use. So I'll keep typing blue glow, which is the material that I actually want to use. Um, so now you can see that we're going from our Arial SDF where we manually assigned a material to our Arcade font using the default material with Arcade because we didn't specify a material to Impact where we actually specified a specific material for it. So next up is if we look at this bangers font here, 
um, the spacing between the O and the F is kind of tight compared to everything else. And it would be nice to kind of tweak that. Now the problem, or not a problem, but a potential way of dealing with that is I guess we could go in and add character spacing. Now the problem with that is we're changing the spacing over everything, which is actually not what we want. We could kind of, I guess, use the kerning feature and set up a kerning pair between the O and the F. Now the problem with that is our issue isn't necessarily with the O and the F spacing, but rather how the spacing is of the bangers font. And just to talk about that spacing, uh, if I turn on again our visual aid and we look around, we can see that the bounding volume for the characters for Arcade, there's actually no overlap between the letters, and that's how the font designer decided to do it. If we look at a font like uh, Avalon, there is some overlap, it's not crazy, and we can't really see it with Arial because I've only got one letter, but in the case of Bangers, the advanced value between letters is like super tight where the letters are butted against each other. And in this case, again, it's a font designer choice, but that is something we'd like to tweak. Now, one way of dealing with this, I guess, is there's a tag in TextMesh Pro that was introduced several versions ago, which is the C space tag for C for character spacing. And I can certainly specify like uh, 0 0.5 EM EM being font units, and now you can see that I've, let me turn off the visual aid. Now you can see that I've adjusted the space between the O and the F. Now, since I didn't close out the tag, it's affecting the next word. So I would come here and say slash C space to end that. And now we have, uh, it's actually a little bit too tight. So let's go to a value of 0.25, which looks better. So now we've kind of balanced the whole thing. Now the challenge with uh, using the C space tag isn't really the tag, but it's like every time we're going to use uh, this bangers font, do we want to have to manually type C space blah 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 every time? Well, there's another way. So two versions ago, I introduced the style tag that allows you to define styles. Uh, and let's go take a look at that. So these styles, if I go to the right resource folder, uh, default style sheet, and go to page two. So what I've done is I've already defined a style for bangers and what these styles are, uh, picture that they're basically macro tags where you can group a bunch of tags together under one tag and that way it makes it a lot easier to recall stuff. So whenever we encounter style equals bangers, it would actually use the bangers font uh, if we wanted to assign a material, the tag could say font equal bangers, uh, space, material, whatever. But here we can see our spacing. Let me actually, eh, let's actually switch it and we'll come back and change the spacing just to show it. So bangers, we're changing the spacing. We're giving it a color just for effect. And then when we close out the style tag, we switch to the previous font. We cancel the space and the color. So let's actually go use that. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to actually replace the font word or keyword by style equals bangers. And in this case, we don't want the SDF. And now we can see that it's switched to the spacing that we're talking about. And let's cancel the backspace here so we can see the effect. in our space. So now we can see that we have our spacing done and everything's good. Now the spacing continues afterwards because we didn't close out the tag. So after of, we want to go slash style and this will cancel the blue and the spacing. But like I said, it's using 0.5 right now, which is not what we wanted. Let's go back in and see when we change this value, what happens. So instead of 0.5, I want 0.25 and you see that it, although, you know, changing the tag, the change automatically sort of ripple through the text object and it's been affected right there. So that's basically all the things I wanted to cover about this new feature. Please keep in mind that multi-font and material support that it's still work in progress. I still have a lot of stuff that I need to do, but I'm pretty pleased with how it's coming along right now. Um, it certainly behaves, you know, the way you would expect it. If I turn on auto sizing and start playing around, you can see that it's shrinking the text up to the minimum size. And let me zoom out and zoom 
to the maximum size, which is 72. And word wrapping and all the different things that we would expect are doing, you know, what they do. Uh, character spacing, you know, everything is behaving as you would expect. So basically, that's it for this video. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please feel free to post. And thank you for watching.